Father, we thank you tonight. We give you all the glory and the praise. Everything that we have done is acknowledged by you and is ascribed unto you. And we thank you for what you are doing already in this weekend. We thank you for all the ministers. And I ask, Lord, that this last session will bring transformation, will bring a release of your presence in our lives. And let your name be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. I just want us to experience something that we can take home that will really change our lives forever. John chapter 4 verses 23 to 24. At the end of the teaching, which is just for 20 minutes, I will come back to the theme, the main scripture for this weekend. And then we'll conclude there. John chapter 4 verses 24. He said, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. And we know not, we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh. Somebody say the hour cometh. And now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. 24 and the last. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So I will just take a brief charge on worship. And I believe the reason why I have to say this or to, to give us these little charges. One of the things that God is doing in the last days in the business of revival is that God is enlightening the understanding of his children as it has to do with the issues of the kingdom. In fact, God's greatest desire is that we know Him. It was meant to be more than church. It was meant to be more than coming to church. The reason why Jesus paid the price of shedding His blood and dying on the cross was that mankind will be restored back to God in true relationship. That was how it started in Genesis and that's where it's going to in Revelations. As a matter of fact, when you read the book of Revelation, which is the end of the Bible, the Bible says in Revelation 21 that God's tabernacle came down to dwell with men. So God's intention from the beginning was relationship, not service, even though that is good. It has to be more than coming to church. It goes beyond a form and it becomes a revelation. And when we catch the revelation on how God works and how we should relate with Him, our understanding becomes enlightened and it becomes very easy to touch God. When that happens, we will realize that heaven in reality is a dimension that is around us. Jesus taught them to pray saying, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Because God wants to extend the beauty of his kingdom the reality of his kingdom into the earth so god is quickening our understanding in the last days and that is why i thank god for this church uh, honestly speaking it's been nearly one year since i preached in a concert i thought they were afraid of inviting me so it's difficult for you to have concerts worship concerts and have a session for the world so but i thank god for this church that we give time to the world and something is going to change in your mind today. And when you leave this place, you will know that the presence of God is not confined to a place. It is a reality. It is a revelation. You can live in it. You can walk in it. You will not need to wait to get to heaven to experience heaven. You can bring heaven into your environment. How many of you believe that? 
So back to the story. Jesus was having a conversation with this woman. And they began to talk about worship. It all began from verse 19 when she said, I perceive that you are a prophet. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, that God in sundry times and in diverse manners spoke to our fathers through the prophet. In the Old Testament, it was through the ministry of the prophet that God would speak to his people. In fact, the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, I believe in verse 21, that holy men spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So every time you needed to know the mind of God, every time you needed to know what God was saying, you needed to locate a prophet. And in the mind of this woman, she had gotten one. So she pretended an issue that was bothering to her, worship. She said, well, our fathers, she was referring to Jacob and the twelve sons of Israel. She said, our fathers worshipped God on this mountain. That was Mount Gerizim. That was the place that Jacob and his sons, or Jacob encountered God uh, when he was returning back from the house of Laban. And um, they stayed around that place for a while. And so they worshipped God in that place. She said, our fathers worshipped God on this mountain. She said, but you Jews, remember this woman was a Samaritan. And Jews and Samaritan had nothing in common. So she said, you Jews, you have, you say that worship must be done in the temple in Jerusalem. Uh, what brought about worship in the temple of God was that after the children of Israel left Egypt, I know that we know these stories, but I'm just going over them so that we can all have a common ground for understanding. When they left Egypt and they got to the wilderness, God began to institute to Moses laws by which his children will communicate with him. That tells you that our God is a God of law and order. Not anything works. Not anything goes. That is why this same God said that the righteousness of a man is as filthy rags. Now, let me help us understand that a little. That scripture was actually in the Old Testament. And it was talking to a people that had not experienced re redemption. It was talking to a people that were still under the grip of the fallen nature of man. So a Christian now who has been redeemed and is filled with the Holy Spirit should not say our righteousness. Because you don't have a righteousness. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21 that he made him who was without sin to be seen for us. That we, somebody say me, hit your chest and say me that we may become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it says that Christ has been made unto us wisdom and sanctification and righteousness and so on. So a Christian should not say our righteousness. You don't longer have a righteousness. Before you became a Christian, the righteousness you possessed was either self-righteousness, which is only me is holy. Everybody is sinful. Or unrighteousness, which is the way the world behave. But when you came into Christ and you were redeemed by the blood of Jesus, you have obtained righteousness as a gift. And then, therefore, you have a relationship and you have a right standing with God. So the woman brought this, the issue of worship to Jesus. She said, we Samaritans believe it has to be on this mountain. And that's because when the 12 tribes of Israel were divided, 10 went to the north and they remained there. Two, which was with Judah, stayed at the south. She said, okay, but what do you say about it? Jesus said, well, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem is worship supposed to be done. I'm sure that the woman was surprised. Just the way somebody is surprised by what I just said about righteousness. So the next time I catch you saying that our righteousness is as a filthy rag, I think I need to report you to the pastor. Amen. Because God has made you righteous. It's a gift. Alright? 
and it is not there so that you can walk and live in sin anyhow no it is there to boost your confidence so you can stand boldly because the bible says let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace it is only with that boldness that confidence that you are standing before your father and that you have received the spirit of your father which is the spirit of adoption that you are not a castaway you know sometimes when we go through depression one of the games of the enemy is to make you feel that god is far from you and that god will not accept you and then you begin to walk in that mentality and you isolate yourself from the presence of god but in reality you were never far from god the bible says in him we live we move and we have our being in fact god has a covenant with us believers in hebrews chapter 13 and in verse 6 he says verse 5 rather he said for he himself has said i will neither leave you nor forsake you so even when just because you are broke does not mean god has left you just because you are sick does not mean god has left you you are still anointed in your sickness so that in the midst of all of that you can still approach god and relate with him as a father as a friend and as your king somebody say amen so jesus told that neither on this mountain nor in jerusalem in jerusalem was where they had the temple and in the design of the temple it had three compartments there was the outer court there was the inner court and the most holy place and i know we know so much about that now in the temple it was designed that at the outer court everybody could come and when the sacrifices had been offered to appease god even though the sacrifices did not take away sin the sacrifices only cleared their it didn't even take the conscience away it was just a way of them excusing the sin that at least a sacrifice have been done we have appeased god but sin was not taken away that was why they went right back into sin that is the reason why when you sin now as a believer and you ask for mercy god will give you the mercy but another thing you need to ask for is grace the bible says come boldly before the throne of grace and obtain mercy and that we will find grace to help in times of need mercy takes care of the issue of sin but grace empowers you to stand against it and to say no to it so at the outer court where the sacrifice was performed they will all worship god but in the inner court only the priests were allowed to go in and it was so delicate they had to do this and do that to be sure that god will not strike them but in the most holy place it was only the high priest that could go in once every year and make atonement with blood and then when he has made that atonement he can come out and then bless the people so that was how worship in the old testament was so for them worship was a location and you see you won't blame them for why it was a location the reason is because before the temple was instituted every time god appeared to men he revealed a dimension of himself dimension when you when you are talking about spiritual things dimension simply means a version of expression of divinity that god would decide to manifest himself like this not because that is all he is he can manifest himself as healing but he's more than healing he can manifest himself as deliverer but he's more than deliverance he can manifest himself as fire but he's more than fire the full revelation of god cannot be captured in any possible display the only person who gave us the full representation of god in flesh was jesus christ and now the bible says that we are all members of christ that means every one of us billions of christians god has made us to express different versions of himself so that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of god because the word glory means fullness it means weight so the reason why you are still alive god would have taken you to heaven is because there is a version of god that was seeded into you to be expressed on earth so that the earth and creation will interact with the glory of god remember when adam sinned god and you know towards the time of the flood 
God took his spirit away from the earth. That was why the earth was destroyed. That is the reason why we have wild animals. That is the reason why you have nature walking against man. But one of the ways that God will restore the earth back to the way he created is that the glory of God in you and I, as we give living expression to God, and I'll talk about that more tomorrow. As you give living expression to the version of God that has been placed in you, whether you are a married woman, whether you are an elderly woman, whether you are a young single, whether you are a teenager, whether you are even a child. In fact, the Bible says that out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength. Age is not the issue. Every one of us were created by default to show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So, the reason why you are a music minister is mu music will become the medium for expressing that glory that is inside of you. The reason why I'm a preacher of the word is not so that people can know that I know scriptures. No. <laughs> that cannot transform. I hope you know. I can quote several scriptures and you will go home and it didn't take care of the addiction in your life. It didn't take care of the depression in your life. No. The reason why I'm a preacher of the word is that through the use of words, the Spirit of God can manifest the life and the glory of God that is in me. My own version as it was customized. Dr. Emi Wanda has his own. I can't copy and try to reveal what is in him. Just like our names and faces are different, so also our purpose in God it has been differentiated even before we were born. When you know that, you will now begin to look at ministry from a different template. You will no longer begin to rush to perform. You will no longer begin to rush to behave like other people. Because you know that the end of my ministry is to give expression to a dimension of the life of God. And it will be known whether you are truly giving it or not. Because when you reveal that glory, there is a praise that will come from the earth to God. Because they have interacted with the nature of God. So every time God appeared to them, they will raise an altar in an attempt to trap that dimension of God. Hoping that in future, if we need healing again, we can rush back to that place and call on God. But Jesus said, neither on this mountain, nor in Jerusalem. He said, for the hour comes and now is where true worshippers will worship him in spirit and in truth. So God has gone beyond the temple as a building to the temple as in you and I. First Corinthians chapter 3, I believe in verse 18. He says, know ye not that ye are God's temple. In First Corinthians chapter 6, I believe in verse 18 again. He says, know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the spirit, your body. So the temple in Jerusalem, that was where people would go to to worship God because they felt that was where God was revealed. But God has gone beyond that. He has put himself inside every one of us. So you have, you have become a temple. You have become a shrine. You have become a mobile carrier of the presence of God. He said, but apostle, why am I not feeling it? That is because the presence of God is beyond a feeling. It is first a knowing. It's a reality you are conscious of that will now generate the feeling. You can't know God by feeling God. No. The Bible says God is spirit. You can't feel spirits. Can you feel the air you breathe? But you cannot deny that it is finding expression. Is that true? That's why you can't feel it. So in trying to feel God, you have reduced your interaction with God to the flesh. You are trying to interact with God from the natural standpoint. How do you interact with a spirit from the natural standpoint? You will have to live with that spirit and interact with that spirit from that place. That is the reason why if God visited man, the first thing that God will do is God will do something about your knowledge and your understanding. Because once your understanding has been enlightened, you will now rise to where God is and begin to relate with Him. You will now know the presence of God, not feel. You will now be a, a, a releaser a dispenser of the power of God not waiting for it to be imparted on you Jesus said true worshippers will worship him in spirit and in truth what does it mean to worship in spirit and in truth 
In spirit means you now realize that your body has become the temple of God. A spirit does not have eyes. Physical eyes. A spirit does not have physical nose. Does not have physical mouth. So the only way a spirit can interact with this, our natural realm, is that it has to look for a body and animate that body. If you watch cartoons, those things you are watching, are they real? No. They were drawings. But somebody somewhere is doing what they call animation. Youth, do you understand what I'm saying? Because our mothers are looking at me like this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. It, it's called animation. Just like without the software on your phone, your phone is, is dead. It's of no use. So that's how you are. You have become like this phone. That the Spirit of God now becomes the operating system, the software inside of you. So He wants to see through you. He wants to breathe through you. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. How do you think He will breathe? Wait. How do you think He will breathe? He needs a man through which He will breathe. That is why <laughs> in Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. Notice that he didn't say God formed man. He said the Lord God. The Lord God there is Adonai Elohim. In fact, the next time the Lord God, that personality was revealed, it was in Christ Jesus. And you know, Jesus was the only expression of God in flesh. So for God to breathe upon a man, he needs to wear another body to breathe upon a body. That's why he told Ezekiel, he said, prophesy to the bones. The word from the mouth of God did nothing to the bones. But when it came out from the mouth of a mortal, the bones came together. So God wants to breathe through you. He wants to speak through you. He wants to live through you. He wants to walk through you. He wants to heal through you. That's why he gave you two hands. Everything he wants to do to touch creation, he wants to do through your body. But you have to dedicate that body to him as a temple. So to worship him in spirit is to say, Holy Ghost, this is your body. Now use it and find expression. Use it and walk around. The Bible said that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good. When Jesus walked on the earth, everybody could finally define who God was. Because they knew what will happen when God comes to town. You, when you walk around your neighborhood, what, does, what do people say? If you need the mic to express what God has put inside of you, then I think you need a recalibration in your understanding. Let me give you a story before we pray. A few years ago, here in Meduguri, and I say this by the help of God, the truth is, <laughs> when you get this revelation I'm sharing with you, you will live like a dead man. You are not concerned about your reputation as a human being. You are not concerned about what people see of you. Whether they say you are beautiful or not, it doesn't really make any sense to you. You are just a body that is alive because another spirit is living and walking through you. For I have been crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20 Yet not I that live, but Christ that lives in you. So you don't get offended when you are invited to minister in a place and they don't call you up. Because yet not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. I walked to a shop in New OGRA there. And I sat down, you know, I was discussing with the person there. Sometimes I would go there to charge my phone and all of it. And then I noticed that she limped on one leg. So when I checked, I discovered that one leg was shorter than the other. You know what? I asked her, I said, do you want God to straighten out this leg and make them equal? She didn't answer me because she was laughing. But unknown to her, I don't need a service to walk in the miraculous. No. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost must be touched, just touch my body. That's the reason why He saved me and kept me. So that through me, He can live and find expression. Long story short, while she was laughing, I held the legs together and I said, Father, thank you for creative miracles. 
let one let the bone of this one grow to become equal and the bones grew her leg became equal she's still in beduguri till today and if what i've said is a lie tomorrow will prove it now as i close that is why in ephesians chapter 5 the theme for this program in verse 14 it says awake thou that sleepest arise from the dead and christ shall give thee light what kind of light is that it's not the light of this bulb no is the light of understanding in ephesians chapter 1 in verse 18 he said that the eyes of your understanding your understanding is your mind your imagination the reason why god puts imaginations in you is so that anything that god is doing in the spirit realm your imagination can capture it and once you can see it it is called vision that's how we see visions <laughs> don't think that something will appear in your front physically and you see it. no that's how visions are seen it is your imagination when the hand of the spirit of god comes upon your mind that part of you will begin to operate with godlike abilities so you can see a person standing looking fine but you see that there's a kidney issue and then you reach out and god brings healing you can see five years from now into your marriage and see that god gave you three children and the third born was a prophet and then you begin to see, know how to train that prophet in the way of the lord you can see an attack seven years from now and then by the instrument of prayer you can step into seven years from now even today and alter that attack and then come back and arrive at that place and the devil will be surprised why the attack did not happen oh come on somebody if you understand this when you worship you will experience the presence of god lift your hands where you are and just talk to God for a minute. Lord, prepare me a sanctuary, your and holy, tried and true. We thanks I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Now, I have another version of it. Take it up a tone, a semitone. I have another version of it. Because of my fellowship with the Holy Spirit and as my understanding grew, this is the version of the song that I have now. Play. You have made me listen a sanctuary pure and holy. Just listen, tried and true. We thanksgiving. I am a Sanctuary for you. So I'm no longer praying that God should prepare me. No, no. That's why He saved me. That's why He shed His blood. So that my body can become a temple. That my life will become a living expression of God. When you understand this, you will no longer deduce your reputation from your natural standpoint. No. It will no longer be by your name on Facebook or on TikTok. No. There is something else inside of you that you carry that you are more conscious of than any limitation in your natural life. So you may be broke, but you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That is what Paul meant when he said that we, though we are poor, yet we are making many rich. So you may be poor physically, but you are rich in the fullness of His glory. And when you begin to live your life with the understanding of that which you are above, I'm telling you, there is nothing in this life that the enemy can use to bait you. 
holiness becomes a natural work because you will not want to defile the body the bible says he that defiles the temple of the lord him the lord will destroy it becomes easy to say no to sin you are not saying no simply because they taught you to say no you are saying no because i know that i have something to lose that is more precious than this pleasure can i share a story with you before we pray two years ago i was worshiping in my room true story 31st night breaking into 1st of january and while i was worshiping the lord and thanking god for the whole year and the one that is ahead in worship oh, i don't know that god used to ask for money in worship i thought that in worship god would come and heal you and say my son in worship god came to me and said son do you love me i said lord i love you now be careful anytime god asks you questions if i were you don't answer because the person that is asking you the question knows the answer He's not asking you for you to answer. He's asking to bring you into revelation. I say, ah, Lord, I love you. He said, okay, give me what's in your account. When I checked the account, it was 555,000. I say, what? What did I put myself into? I say, but what, Lord, I love you. I won't trade you for silver nor gold. I won't trade you for riches untold You are You are my everything I have five more minutes I empty the money and continue worshipping Somewhere around four God spoke to me and said somebody is going to come to see you today and they will come with a gift that I want you to reject. I say, uh-uh. After collecting my money, I should receive now. Give and it shall be. You know, God will not tell you what you should reject. You will just make up your mind to reject. Then when the thing comes, you will now know. Somebody texts me two hours later and said, Apostle, I want to come and see your house. And by 10 a.m., they drove a Highlander Jeep to my house. True story, I told you, you remember. They drove it to my house and said, Apostle, take. But what did God say? Reject it. And you know what? God didn't tell me why I had to reject it. It was recently that God told me. He said that a man's life does not consist in the abundance of what he has. If you want to carry the presence of God, if you want to see God manifest through you, you should be ready to give up many things. Tonight, I'm going to lead you to pray a prayer. And it's a prayer of surrender. Anything that has taken the place of God in my life, tonight I lay it on this altar. And I ask that you will begin a new walk with me in the name of Jesus. Can you pray for two minutes? I have less than five minutes to go. Can you talk to God? Whether you are seated, whether you are standing, can you talk to God? Say, Lord, anything that has restrained me, from laying hold of the knowledge of your glory every train that has restrained my relationship with you i want to go further i want to go deeper today i surrender before you and make sure you mean it before him i surrender it i'm not saying throw those things away no i'm just saying tell him that god i would rather have the knowledge of your glory than any other thing that this life will offer i want to know you i want to walk with you I want to have a relationship with you. Be magnified, O oh Lord. You are highly exalted, and there is nothing, and there is nothing.
on the strings. Stretch your two hands before you. Before I sit down, let me just know if the person is here. Is there a lady here with a name that starts with M? M, letter M, a lady. Well, God showed me someone who is light skinned. Is there a lady here with a name that starts with M in this church? If you are here, please come. Maybe the person is not here today, maybe tomorrow. Is there somebody like that? Your name starts with letter M. Letter M. Please come quickly. There's something God wants to do in your life. There's a restoration that God is bringing. What's your name? Huh? Mata. Clap for Jesus. You are wearing an ushering tag. Are you an usher? No, I'm ushering for the program. Okay, you are with the choir. There's a work of restoration that God wants to do for you and your family. Alright? There's a work of restoration. Material restoration, relationship restoration in your family. But for you, there is a work. God wants to rekindle the fire in your secret place. God wants to draw you close to himself. The Lord said, when you go there, find a lady with the letter M. He said, she's my vessel. And I want to anoint her today. Are you ready or not? Or we should come tomorrow. You are ready. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Please stretch your hands towards her. I want you to put my hand, your hand on my hand. Father, Lord, we release a season of restoration over her. And I ask that you breathe upon her right now. Amen. You have made her your vessel. And from today, she will carry that glory. She will carry that grace. God will raise you as a voice to nations. It's a new season for you. Receive that Amen. grace right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My time is up. We'll continue tomorrow. Clap your hands and give God praise.